Now we're going to talk about power generation and I will explain the main ideas behind the production of power, how the power company produces all this electricity and transmits it all over the state and to your house and to other houses and other buildings that need it. And there are three main ways that we're going to discuss, three main methods of power generation we'll discuss. A fossil fueled plant which burns fossil fuels, a nuclear plant which runs off of nuclear energy and a hydroelectric plant which is produced from damming up a river. And we'll also talk a little bit about um, some other alternative forms of energy. But these are the main methods of producing electrical energy. Fossil fuel plants and nuclear plants account for most of the energy that we use. Now we're, we'll start by talking about a fossil fueled plant. And a fossil fueled plant is called a fossil fueled plant because it burns fossil fuels. And fossil fuels are fuels that we get out of the ground. Coal, oil, natural gas, things that we dig up or mine or drill for. And they're called fossil fuels. They're thought to have formed from the decay of biological material. Plants and animals from thousands or millions or billions of years ago decayed and became fossil fuels. That's the commonly accepted theory, at least in American universities. Although I should point out that there are some other theories, some theories of non-biological origin of fossil fuels that I personally think are at least worth considering. But regardless, they're called fossil fuels and we get them out of the ground. Coal, oil, and natural gas. And here's a simple diagram that will show the main concepts of a fossil fueled plant. Now if you're drawing this in your notes, think about this drawing area right here as about half of a sheet of paper. So that might be the top half of your piece of notebook paper. And you can draw a diagram that looks something like this. Let's draw a building here. And some water is pumped in and there's a tank here. And so water goes in and it's sitting in the bottom of this, this tank and they put some coal underneath here and the coal's burning and that's hot obviously and it heats up the water and when you heat water it becomes steam and so steam comes blasting out the other side now in truth it's a lot more complicated than what I've drawn right here they don't just have a bunch of coal under a tank of water there's all kinds of control systems and safety valves and pressure monitoring systems and um, things to coordinate the flow and backup systems in case there's a problem but the main concept is shown right here and that is that they heat water they burn coal to heat water to make steam and you know what happens when you uh, heat water and make steam you've all put a pot on a stove don't draw this in your notes but just think about this think about a, a tea kettle here so there's the handle and you put a little water in here and what happens when you heat it up you get steam coming out and you get a lot of steam. You'll get a huge volume of steam from just a tiny volume of water. When the water changes state to go from liquid to a gas, the volume increases tremendously and it has to come out very fast as a result. So you don't just get steam coming out of here at this end, you get steam coming out really fast, just like steam blasting out the end of a tea kettle, except on a much larger scale. And they take this steam and they pipe it over to a turbine. And a turbine is like a fan. There's blades there, except you can think of it as a fan in reverse. A fan is made to spin and move the air. A turbine is made to have the air blow on it and make it move. So it's kind of like a windmill in that sense. The steam blows on it. This is not a wind turbine. It's a steam turbine and is designed specifically for use with high pressure steam like this. And the steam hits those turbine blades and makes them turn. And so this rotates right here. So this is not a pipe right here. This is the drive shaft from the turbine. And when the turbine, when the steam blows on it, the turbine rotates and it turns this generator. So let me draw another box over here that will represent a generator. And a generator produces electricity. So let's label these. This is the turbine, T-U-R-B-I-N-E, and here's the generator. And a generator is the opposite of a motor. And you know what a motor is. You turn a motor on, it uses some electrical energy and the thing spins. A motor is designed to take the electrical energy and produce motion, specifically rotation. So it's converting the, the electrical energy into kinetic energy 
or the rotation of the motor. The generator does the reverse. You put in the motion, in this case you turn the thing and the, the steam turbine is what's turning it and it produces the electricity. So we'll draw just two little, um, a little positive and negative terminal over here. And so electricity comes out and they put it into a transformer. And I'll just draw the transformer as a box. And a transformer kicks up the voltage. That takes whatever voltage the generator is producing and, and kicks it up to really high voltage. It can kick, kick it up to thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of volts. And they transmit the electricity long distances at this very high voltage. And you've probably seen these uh, towers. They're literally all over the country. And I'll just make a, a crude representation here. These are the power lines that, that are carried on these large towers sometimes called high tension lines. I'll draw a couple of these. And they come in all different shapes, but you've seen these. And they're, they're literally all over the country. These large steel frame structures that are carrying these large power lines. And the power lines on those things are typically at millions of volts. So let's draw some wires running, running over to these power lines and then they run across and then they'll come down to a step down station and these are the the stations you see around town they have a lot of gray equipment in there electrical equipment um, these are other transformers and connections in here and the power comes in and they might kick the power down to 20 or 30 thousand volts so it might be running at millions of volts along these lines and then they kick it down to a lower voltage and send it to the neighborhood on the more uh, traditional power poles that you see like this so the power runs along these poles and then on, on the side of these poles you see these gray canisters every now and then let me make them another color just so you can see them better and those are transformers also and they kick the voltage down to about 110 or 120 volts and it comes into your house and the lights can burn because the electricity is coming into your house and sometimes the wires run into your house underground in which case there's a little green box out in front of your lawn uh, with some electrical equipment in it or they, they come in above ground and usually attach uh, up near the roof somewhere near the eave of the house somewhere about right there and either way they run through a little meter which measures the usage of your electrical energy so that's the basic idea the, um, the, the steam that is used from the turbine is usually recycled here. They usually bring it back around and might cool it off in the process. So it, it's running in a closed loop and it goes back around. So Although there's different designs. And then one of the byproducts of this, obviously, if you're burning a bunch of coal down here, uh, you've got some smokestacks. and some pollution, some smoke. So there's some atmosphere, uh, a lot of carbon put into the atmosphere from that. But we get some electricity from it. So that's the basic idea. You burn, you burn some coal or natural gas. Natural gas tends to be fairly clean burning, doesn't produce as much pollution or oil. And you use the heat that's stored chemically in that material to make a uh, turn the water into steam, the steam turns the turbine, the turbine turns the generator, the generator produces electricity, it's kicked up to high voltage in the transformer and it's transmitted across the lines, it's kicked back down to a lower voltage in the step down station here, or sometimes called a step down transformer. And these things are big, they might be half an acre or so, and then it goes out to the power lines and comes through smaller transformers to lower voltage and to your house or whatever other buildings need it. Now some people ask why they, they kick it up to high voltage like this and the reason is it's a lot more efficient to transmit it at high voltage. This diagram is not to scale. The power plant here is really big, much bigger than your house and there's usually many many miles of wire over here and uh, copper wire or aluminum wire tends to have very low resistance but when you put several miles of it together you get a significant amount of electrical resistance so there's some energy loss in the wires and that's measured in volts so let's imagine that there's a, a thousand volts of, of drop a thousand volt drop in voltage 
just transmitting it that large distance. Well, if you produce your electricity, say at 2,000 volts, and then there's a thousand volts lost just due to resistance in the wires. Then you have a thousand volts left to use. That's 50% loss of energy. But think about this. What if you produced your electricity at a million volts and then you lost a thousand volts in the wires? That's one tenth of one percent. So that's a very small loss of energy if you can transmit it at really high energy. And that increase in efficiency makes it worth going to the trouble to use the transformer to kick it up to high voltage and then the step down station to kick it back down when it gets closer to its destination. In other words, they transmit the power at high voltage for efficiency reasons. But those are the basic concepts behind the operation of a fossil fueled power plant.